came back and Allah gave this joyous occasion of Eid. That was the first Eid. Eid is something that returns. And also it's a dua. The statement Eid is a dua. Allah, make it such that joy comes back again and again. So Allah Ta'ala bless one and all. There's a beautiful hadith by Abu Umama radiyallahu anhu. Who states that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Man ahya laylatay al -eedain. He who gives life. Meaning he, he stays awake. In ibadah. In the two nights prior to the two Eids. Now, this is not so difficult because generally we were doing this in Ramadan. So basically we have to continue. Allah give us tawfiq. So the hadith says, He who gives life to the night, meaning he spends the night in good ibadah, in rigorous ibadah, on the two nights before the two Eids. Look at the virtue. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لَمْ يَمُتْ قَلْبُهُ يَوْمَ تَمُوتُ الْقُلُوبُ His heart won't die when everyone's hearts die. What does this hadith mean is, see, we're living in the times of fitna and fasad. This is one of the closest meanings. We're living in the times before, prior to Dajjal, and the signs have, so many have become apparent. So generally the heart and a person becomes, becomes, uh, uh, becomes, what you call it, succumbs to these fitness. Now you get an energy booster, you get vitamins, then the body becomes immune. Ibadah on this night makes our hearts immune to the fitna that will take place. That's the benefit of this night's ibadah. It's really a Mubarak night. This night of, of, of spending time in dhikrullah, spending time with, with Allah, with, with, with tilawat of the Qur'an, and those who can come to the masjid, make ibadah as we were making, it's really, really meritorious. Something else really virtuous is the Eidgah. Allah has blessed us with that, inshallah. Uh, most probably it will be the Eidgah, weather, weather permitting, alhamdulillah, at the Masjid Siddiq grounds, right? Opposite Dominic's. The Sunnah is to walk to the Eidgah. So Allah give us tawfiq, to walk to the Eidgah, and something very interesting about the Sunnah is Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would walk, taking one route, return via another route. The hadith of Abdullah bin Abbas anhuma states that Al Malaika taqumu ala afwahi sikaki. The angels stand on the roads, on the streets. And what do the angels say? So why I'm mentioning this now, so that we can conscientize ourselves as we're walking, because sometimes we forget this hadith. <laughs> We're walking and there's angels standing and all the creation of Allah can see the angels except insan and jinn because it's a test. But what are the angels telling us? Ya Ummata Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam O Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Come to your Lord such a Lord who's prepared to give you in abundance and pardon grave sins يُعْطِي jazil. Allah gives in abundance and He pardons our mistakes and our faults and our sins. So this is what I want us to be conscious of. When going to the Eid Ga, we make be involved in the takbir in this Eid, preferably softer, aloud, louder, according to the different madahib, and we conscious of Allah, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we're going via one route and we're making dua. Whilst walking to the Eid Ga, the angels are saying Ameen to the duas we are making. That's why the, the walk, walk is even better because you've got time to make dua. You don't get there so quickly. So we're walking and we're making dua and it is sunnah to walk. But why walk via one route and return via another route? Because that's distinctly mentioned in the sunnah. Because the angels on the one route bear testimony for us as well as the angels on the other route as well. What other benefit is there in walking to the Eidgah? The other benefit is so that this piece of ground bears testimony that the ummah is walking for Allah and the other ground also bears testimony and there's another benefit as well and this is very uh, very beneficial for us in South Africa because we live in a country that has predominantly non-Muslims and this is mentioned clearly so that the non-Muslims via this route see the Muslims so happy and the Muslims with dhikrullah and this should have an, have an impact on their hearts so the non-Muslims on this road and the non-Muslims on that road see the Muslims smiling happy and this and this will have an impact on them and Allah give them hidayah also. Something else very important is at the Eid Ga, Allah addresses the Malaika. Ma jaza'u ajirin wafa amalahu. Now why I'm mentioning this tonight is because generally I myself and I think you also or probably some of you will also forget because we're involved in the Eid Ga, 
but we're not realizing at that time what is Allah doing for us. Allah says to the Malaika, what is the reward of my servant who has done his best? Wafa amalahu. So the angels respond, Ya Rabb, ayyu wafa ajrahu. That he be paid and rewarded in full. So Allah says to the Malaika, Ushidukum ya Malaikati. Allah makes the Malaika witness that for their Siyam and their Qiyam, for the fast in Ramadan and for their, for their Taraweeh and Tahajjud, Allah says to the Malaika, I have granted them Ridai wa Maghfirati. I have granted my servants my pleasure and my forgiveness. Then Allah addresses the Eid Ga. Allahu Akbar. And Allah says, whatever you ask me for Akhirah, illa a'taytuhu lakum, is guaranteed. So I'm thinking, what we can ask Allah for Akhirah? <laughs> ask Allah to accept us for deen. Think about this tomorrow. Ask Allah to protect the iman of our children. Ask Allah to make us happy of Quran. Ask Allah to give us the love of Allah. Ask Allah to cleanse our souls from filth. Whatever need of Akhirah, Allah to give us deen, Allah give us piety, Allah give us his love. Whatever question, whatever request we have from Allah for Akhirah, the hadith says, Illa a'taytuhu lakum. And whatever you ask me for dunya, Allah says, I will look into it. Is it good for you or not? And this is so amazing. Because sometimes we think something is good for us, but it's bad for us. A person didn't have, but now that he has, He's falling into sin. He's doing more guna and so forth. So Allah, look at Allah's mercy. Allah knows exactly what's good for us. So the hadith says clearly, ask me whatever you want of dunya. If I don't give you this, I'll give you something else better for you. But ask. And whatever we asked is guaranteed when walking to the Eidgah and at the Eidgah also. So let's maximize and seize this opportunity that we have. It's to, don't just take it as Eid. No, it's Eid and du'as are guaranteed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. It's also sunnah to have the ghusl and go early and also wear the best garment according to sunnah. It doesn't have to be new, neat, sunnah garment, the best. Allah ta'ala give us tawfiq. And also the sunnah in to this Eid is to partake of something. See how valuable is sunnah. Allah gets happy. You're going to eat before going to the Eid gah something sweet or something that's following sunnah. For that something you're putting in your mouth, you're actually getting thawab. And for the other Eid, wait till afterwards and preferably at least something from the Qurbani animal. But look how beautiful is the sunnah. How much of sweetness Allah becomes happy. Allah give us tawfiq inshallah. And the sunnah dua for Eid is taqabbal Allahu minna wa minkum. That may Allah accept each one's efforts and endeavors. Allah accept all your efforts, all our efforts. Wa sallallahu ala nabi Allah, Alhamdulillah, 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 Alhamdul